Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Director Fantasia is absent, so I'll be filling in for her. And this is the commissioner meeting of July 14th, 2021 at 6 p.m. here at the Sussex County Community College Performing Arts Center in Newton, New Jersey. I'd like to call this uh, meeting to order. And with that, Terry, can you please call the roll? For the record, Director Fantasia is absent. Commissioner Petillo? Here. Commissioner Carney? Here. Commissioner Yardley? Here. Deputy Director Posada? Here. And I'd like to ask for you to please rise with us for a moment of silence and to salute the flag. Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice as defined by Section 3D of Chapter 231, PL 1975, has been made by regular mail and email, and such notice being submitted on May 5, 2021, from the Administrative Center of the County of Sussex, located at 1 Spring Street, Newton, New Jersey, to the following, the New Jersey Herald, the Star-Ledger, WSUS Radio, and WNNJ Radio and is also posted on the bulletin board maintained in the Administrative Center for Public Announcements and has been submitted to the Sussex County Clerk in compliance with said act. With that, we will move to approve the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Commissioner Second. Patillo moves. Commissioner Yardley seconds. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? The agenda is approved. We'll move to our favorite portion of the agenda, and that's our proclamations, certificates, and presentations. And item one on our agenda is the NJAC scholarship recipient, Angel Walker, presented by Commissioner Yardley. Thank you. Well, this is about to be sent. This award's going to uh, Angela Walker. You know, Herb, actually, hang on for a moment. Why don't we do uh, the Musconet Kong Watershed Association presentation first, because your microphone is over here. And then once that's done, Herb, uh, we'll pick this back up. You got it. OK. So now um, we're going to uh, introduce the Musconet Kong Watershed Association, who's presenting on their Great Waters Project. And I'm going to hand it over to Commissioner Carney to introduce. All right, thank you, <coughs> Anthony. Um, I'm introducing Alan Hunt. He's the executive director of the Maskinacon River Management Council. The MRMC is a non-for-profit organization dedicated to protecting and improving the quality of the Maskinacon River and its watershed, including all its natural resources. So welcome, and thank you for coming. Great. Thank you for the introduction, Commissioner Carney. Uh, <coughs> commissioners, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, we had a great drive up here and noticed the sign on the way into Sussex County it says uh, people and nature together and that's exactly what we'll be talking about tonight. So I'd like to introduce a collaborative project called uh, New Jersey's Great Waters and our tagline for this is to keep it the way it is. So I just want to introduce uh, uh, the commissioners to the, the landscape and the major watersheds that we have in northwestern New Jersey. Uh, we have the Delaware River, the Musconetcon, the Flatbrook, the Wapakon Creek, the Pollen Skill, the Pequest River, and the Pohacon Creek. These are all well known for as, uh, the recreational use, for fishing, boating, sightseeing, uh, hiking, and you know, they're popular for residents and for visitors alike. And in Sussex County's watersheds, uh, you know, we've done a mapping project and we've looked at what types of resources we have here. There's over 100,000 acres that are publicly accessible. Over 16,000 acres of preserved farmlands, preserving those scenic views. Over 50 river access points where people can paddle or fish. Over th there's 32 historic districts, four public swimming areas, and one wild scenic river and one national water trail. And both of those are on the Musconetcon River. Um, 
Commissioner Carney knows that because he's our representative to the River Management Council. Anthony, you were in that position previously. Uh, we appreciate that and the good relationship we've had around those issues. So one of the steps that we've taken in our project was to understand the recreational resources that we have in this region of the state and we actually made an online map. Uh, the link is up there on that and uh, we've mapped all these public access points so that people can know where to fish, where to swim, where to recreate appropriately. So that people are accessing those lands, many of those lands which have been um, purchased with you know, public dollars or easements have been uh, used to, you know, with public dollars to grant access to those lands. And the goals of our project are to keep this region a desirable place to live support the growing regional tourism and recreation economy, make sure that we're protecting the water quality so that we can keep the recreation economy going, make sure we're keeping the drinking water clean, make sure that the headwater streams that feed those rivers and those lakes and springs aren't going to be filled, and to make sure that we're engaging and cooperating among stakeholders, which is part of the reason why we're doing outreach to the municipalities and counties, all 50 of the municipalities in the four counties of this region. And these are our partners. I'm here representing the partnership today. Um, we also have the Trout Unlimited, the Association of New Jersey Environmental Commissions, the Delaware River Greenway Partnership. They're involved in the Lower Delaware Wild and Scenic River, which runs roughly from the Delaware Water Gap to Ewing, the Highlands Coalition, and the Watershed Institute. And our funding comes from the William Penn Foundation and the Environmental Endowment of New Jersey. So why is it important to protect our waters? You know, part of it's recreation, but you know, water is water. It's what we drink. Six million people and rely on the waters of northern New Jersey for their drinking water supply. Annually, the protection of those waters uh, results in about 6.6 .6 billion of free ecological services to the Delaware River watershed part of northwest New Jersey. And what that means is that's the free stream cleaning service provided by good quality habitat, good quality streams. And it keeps the rivers flowing so that we have base flow for agriculture, for irrigation. It also provides jobs. The outdoor industry in New Jersey is about $6 billion a year. There's over 130,000 jobs. And when we looked into the counties that had economic development plans, uh, the only one that we saw in this four county region was Hunterdon County. When they were looking at what impact tourism had on their economy, on their economy, it was $317 million. Another aspect about this is that the natural amenities, the parks, the streams, the places to fish, the places to paddle, the places to hike, are kind of like insurance for a region of the state which has its ups and downs in the housing market. We're not a consistently strong housing market. Right now, it seems a little bit better than usual. Other times, like around the recession, it was a little bit worse. But it helps draw in people to these places that otherwise might not be as attractive. And if people want to live here, they'll work, they'll play here, they'll spend here, they'll maintain that taxpayer base, and they'll maintain the school enrollments. But the map here is showing where there's historically been school enrollment change. If you notice, northwestern part of the state is where we've seen the most decrease in school enrollments. It's also important for quality of life. Uh, there's a lot of public open space in this region. Sussex County has a lot of it. There's a lot of preserved farmland. And about half of the residents in New Jersey do participate in outdoor recreation. They're out, th out there enjoying these resources. And when the water is clean, these people who are coming out here or who live here, they're buying boats, they're buying fishing gear, they go camping, they stay overnight, they buy homes or second homes. And something I think, you know, in Sussex County we see quite a lot of these activities. When the water is not clean, and this is a picture of a harmful algal bloom, we all know about some of the issues that some of our lakes have had regarding this type of issue, is that people have to then spend their money to improve water quality, whether that's drinking water or municipal stormwater or other things that need to be corrected. People avoid swimming and boating. They go somewhere else and they might live somewhere else. 
You know, but the economic activity changes when the water quality is not clean. But when there's good planning, and I like to think our river management council is one example of that, we're collaborating with four counties and uh, 14 municipalities. When people are working together, those scenic characteristics are retained. There's good recreational access, people want to live there, and there's good quality of life. So what our initiative is asking for is a, a resolution of support. It's not tied to a specific policy proposal, but it articulates these issues and these values. And what we're asking for is a public process with the DEP so that there could be a discussion, perhaps a rulemaking process, around how to protect recreational waters from degradation. The state currently only looks at aquatic habitat and water chemistry, they don't look at where people re recreate when they make permitting decisions about how much a facility could pollute or whether new pollution could be allowed. That's only for point sources that that would apply. They don't look at how to protect drinking water from contamination when you have the situation that we have in our region of carbonate bedrock or limestone. Limestone makes sinkholes. I think we're familiar with that. And that's where the surface water can become part of the groundwater. And there's two different standards in our state the groundwater is not usually as protective as the surface water. So this is asking that the DEP pay attention to that, re to that concern and make sure that you're looking when someone puts a permit through that um, these things might be connected. You don't want to inadvertently contaminate your groundwater aquifer to make sure that streams and springs aren't being built on and to encourage partnerships with municipalities. On our project website, for example, we talk about the Council of uh, Governments model, where municipalities can partner together and share services like professional planners, like uh, attorneys. And, but it doesn't introduce another layer of government. It's a way of saving money and catching those cross-boundary issues and ensuring that there's public access to lands and water. So that's what the resolution asks for. It's not tied to a specific issue um, or specific policy proposal, but it's asking DEP to have a discussion around these issues. So what could Sussex County do? Uh, one is develop economic strategies that include protections for recreational waters that support tourism. Stay informed about water quality issues. I don't know if folks are aware, but DEP uh, recently released its new integrated water quality assessment short story is uh, from their monitoring water quality um, concerns have increased uh, since the last time that they did that assessment so they're looking at uh, 2018 and 2020 data compared to 2016 data and issues like temperature phosphorus and whatnot have increased in our region we're asking for the great waters resolution of support and considering uh, a council of government small for shared services and addressing some of those boundary issues that happens uh, with local planning and zoning. This is our website, greatwatersnewjersey.org. We have issue briefs on there. There's a place for people to share stories. We're actually doing video interviews that'll probably be up there in a month or two uh, with local residents who go fishing, who bring young folks out and go fishing, um, people who paddle and hike. We have um, some action guides about what municipalities can do at their level for ordinances and uh, we have the resolution on there too and that's also where the maps are and uh, for sussex county i would be the point of contact so if you had any questions you could follow up with me thank you thank you alan thanks very much can you check the microphone for me thank you alan very much for coming and presenting that Certainly our natural resources are extremely important here in Sussex County and we're uh, very thankful for all the work that you and the Muskinuck County Watershed Association are doing here in Sussex County. So thank you for coming tonight. Okay, now we will move on to the NJAC scholarship recipient, Angel Walker, presented by Commissioner Yardley. Is Angel Walker and her family here? Angel, are you here? Okay, not seeing Angel here. I'm going to ask if you can read um, okay. that material for us, Herb. Sure.
The NJAC, the New Jersey Association of County Foundation, um, awards uh, 20, uh, 21 million grant to um, NJAC Foundation. So these were a conglomerate of various organizations, banks, um, and different uh, businesses throughout the state that have contributed money for this. You can hear me okay, right? Okay. For this presentation. Um, the foundation is partnering with New Jersey Council of Vocational Technical Schools to identify potential candidates that will distribute two 500 scholarships to well-deserving students in all 21 counties across the state. Since 2011, Investors Bank has awarded the NJAC Foundation grant monies totaling $200,000, which has helped 250 county vocational technical school graduates to continue their education at home in the Garden State. Uh, the NJAC Foundation is a non-for-profit organization affiliated with the New Jersey Association of Counties that is committed to provide innovative educational opportunities for county vocational technical schools and county college students pursuing vocational opportunities. So just would like to read um, something about Angel. Angel Walker is so passionate about his education and becoming an engineer, he is constantly involved and is always looking to learn more to better educate himself in this field. Angel is one of the hardest working students I know. In addition to him having a 4.0 GPA, Angel works two jobs and runs varsity track. Angel plans to continue to push him help himself further towards this goal and passions and the opportunity for his scholarship will help him pursue and reach his goal of becoming an engineer. Congratulations, Angel Walker. And we'll see what we get this year. Thank you. Thank you, Herb, and congrats to Angel. We'll make sure that uh, Angel gets that, uh, uh, that proclamation from us. Okay, with that, we're gonna move on to item number seven on our agenda, which are public hearings. There are none. Item eight on our agenda is public session from the floor. This is our first public comment portion. The public session is for those wishing to make a comment of three minutes or less regarding an agenda item. Please simply come up to the microphone and maintain six feet distance from other attendees. State your name, municipality, and agenda topic for the record. Uh, the clerk will go ahead and give you a go ahead to start speaking. She'll also give you a one minute warning as well. So with that, is there a public session to open the floor for public comment? I'll make the motion. Commissioner Yardley makes the motion. Commissioner Patillo seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstaining? Motion carries and the floor is open for public comment regarding agenda items. If there's anybody who would like to speak regarding agenda items, please come on up to the microphone, <coughs> state your name and municipality. Hi, good evening, Christina Marks, Franklin, New Jersey. Um, as most of you know, I'm not only a county employee, but also president of CWA Local 1032, Branch 10. We understand from the agenda that the commissioners are accepting and inserting into the budget 50% of the American Rescue Plan Act funds this evening. As we stated in a communication that went out earlier, the American Rescue Plan Act provides enhanced funding to state and local governments to provide pandemic relief. Specifically, Section 602G, provides that eligible workers who were required to report to work sites during the pandemic can be awarded up to $13 per hour in addition to wages the worker otherwise receives for all work performed by the eligible worker with a limit of that amount up to uh, $25,000 for each worker. Funds received through this act can be used for this premium pay hazard pay purpose and there are already reports of public sectors recognizing their essential employees and using these funds for that purpose, to provide hazard pay for those employees. Our CWA Local 1032 branch has many members who were unable to work remotely and had no choice but to work on site. 
and did so to ensure that there was a continuation of services to the county and to the residents. They were exposed to hazards that put themselves and their families at risk. It is also not a secret that the majority of these members also do not make a competitive wage and were forced to work second and, uh, are forced to work second and third jobs to make ends meet. Many lost those additional income because of closures forced by the pandemic. So not only were members and county employees at risk for their health and safety, they were exposed to the virus and in some cases did realize the effects of the virus, um, but they also suffered loss of critical income. We further understand that the above is not lost on the board and we appreciate the ability in order to discuss this hazard pay for our essential members in the very near future. Thank you. Are there any other speakers regarding agenda items only? <clears throat> Seeing none, is there a motion to close the floor for public comment? I'll move. Commissioner Patillo moves, is there a second? Second. Commissioner Corney seconds, any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries. Uh, I did just want to go back to that and thank Christina. Uh, where, where did she go? There you are. Um, I just wanted to, to thank you for coming. Thank you for your note as well. Uh, uh, I, I think the board is absolutely willing to uh, discuss that with the CWA, and I think we look forward to doing so. So thank you for coming tonight and sharing that. Okay, and with that, we're going to move to our next agenda item, which is commissioner comments. And as always, we'll start to my left with Commissioner Corney. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to start out by um, thanking Christina Marks for coming. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more on Friday. I already spoke to Anthony uh, about that, so we can get a little more involved on Friday's meeting. Um, I also want to thank Alan uh, for being here again. You know, it's important. Everybody needs to realize how important the watershed is because once we lose that, uh, it's very hard, if ever, that we get that back. Um, Commissioner Fasano and Patillo, myself, we live on lakes. So we know how important it is, especially with the algae bloom and, and so on and so forth. The impact that it takes on the, the, the businesses in the vicinity is, is, is it's a lot. It's, it's, a big, uh, it's a big problem when the lakes have issues like algae bloom and so on and so forth. So very important. And again, thank you for doing what you do. Moving on to my report, I'll make it short and sweet. Um, engineering and planning, we started our 2021 crack sealing program. Uh, the 2021 program is valued at 350,000 and will seal cracks along approximately 33 miles of county routes. The program targets, targets roads between three and four years of age, but a reevaluation and possible resealing during a road seventh and eighth, eighth year. The 21, 2021 crack sealing program will be managed by Division of Public Works and is scheduled to begin in mid-July. Uh, 2021 resurfacing program uh, is currently advertised with bids receipt scheduled for tw July 20th and tentative contract award during the commissioner's meeting of August 11th, which will be two meetings from now. Uh, the program includes the milling and paving with just over 34 miles of county routes. The estimate for the construction, construction inspection, testing, and police enhancement is $13 million. Project construction is expected to require six months with work beginning in September of 2021 include a winter shutdown and resume in May of 22. And going to my NJ TPA report, um, we had a meeting on Monday the 12th. Uh, this, this isn't our county, but this is something that affects a lot of us because we're, we, we do drive out of the county, most of us in Sussex County. Uh, this is a approve the initial financial plan for the interstate route 80 and 15 interchange improvements project at the July 12th NJTPA board meeting. This proposed $146 million project, which includes new bridges, ramps, improving, improvements to existing bridges, along with selective widening along the section of I-80. The Route 15 North Bridge replacement project will advance first due to poor condition of the bridge. This bridge placement is projected to start in February of 2024. So that's gonna be a big project hopefully bring a lot of jobs <clears throat> and hopefully make our roads a little safer because that bridge actually, I did that bridge earlier heading uh, eastbound and uh, that, that bridge needs a lot of, lot of love. 
Um, moving on, a panel of industry experts informed the NJTPA freight, com freight Committee at their June meeting that the trucking industry is rebounding from the COVID-19 pandemic, but is facing a number of challenges going forward. As the economy is recovering, the trucking industry faces surging demand for moving goods, but remains ha hampered by a severe driver shortage despite offering higher wages, along with continuing need for additional truck parking. Also, Amtrak, the National Passage Railway Company, continues to work on advancing their recently completed Connex US 2035 Vision Passenger Rail Improvement Plan, which proposes to signify expand passenger rail service across the United States and Northeast in particular. This plan will also benefit significantly from the Gateway Tunnel Project, which will provide additional capacity from New Jersey to New, J New York Penn Station, and has recently received the key environmental approval from the Federal Transit Administration, or the FTA, uh, this project will also benefit the Lackawanna Cutoff Rail Project in Sussex County. So hopefully with that being done, we can get some more people moving here, a little easier <coughs> ride to the city, and less traffic on the roads. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Carney. Commissioner Patillo. Sure, thank you. I'd like to begin by congratulating Angel Walker on receiving the NJ, uh, the NJ uh, Scholarship Award. And I just want to say that um, her goal of reaching an engineer is probably something that she will succeed in doing, and I want to wish her a lot of success in all those future endeavors. I also want to thank you for that great report on the Great Waters, and especially thank you for this paper copy, because I'd like to really, there's a lot of work in here, and I'd like to have the time to review it. And I, I agree with you so much that it's so important that we care for our waterways. And I'm very, being from a PACOM, I'm very uh, familiar with Muskonecon and all of the issues that we have in some ways worked through together. So thank you for coming tonight. Uh, for vaccinations, the New Jersey Department of Health reports Sussex County residents have received a total of 148,502 vaccinations, 80,589 first doses, and 73,615 second doses. Uh, the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine consists of one dose. Uh, for Skyden's ride, they're installing cameras on its buses to enhance the passenger and worker safety thanks to a grant from New Jersey Transit. The cameras will capture footage now of the front, sides, back, and wheelchair lift area of each bus as well within, within the bus itself. We have a woman's health clinic that will be held on Thursday, July 15th from 4 to 8.30 p.m. at the Office of Public Health Nursing, which is at 201 Wheatsworth Road, in Hamburg, and appointments are required and can be made by calling the Office of Public Health Nursing at 973-579-0570, extension 1246. Uh, the next program I'm going to mention is very important, especially for our seniors, and it's our Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. This program provides eligible seniors aged 60 years and older with $30 in vouchers to be used at local participating farm stands. And vouchers are available from June 1st through September 30th and must be redeemed by November 30th. For specific qualifications, you can contact your senior services at 973-579-0555. Next is our Veterans Picnic. And the Veterans Picnic will be held in a grab-and-go manner this year at the Sussex Fire Department from noon to 2 p.m. on Saturday, August 14th. Veterans may register to attend by calling the Division of Senior Services at 973-579-0555. That was always a wonderful time to get together with vent vendors, um, veterans, I'm sorry. And even though we can't meet uh, together, it's going to be a grab and go. It's a great way to honor our veterans and have a special uh, event for them. The last one is Seniors Day at the Fair, another great event. Um, they will be announcing the Senior of the Year at this affair. It's going to be held on the morning of Thursday, August 12th, under the Performing Arts Tent. Sussex County Skydance Ride will be providing transportation to the fair if you need a ride. And those in need of transportation can call Skyden's Ride at 973-579-0480. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Patillo. Commissioner Yardley. I thank you. 
the good news is that there's been a tremendous decrease in the number of new COVID cases in the county. Therefore, uh, in lieu of releasing daily reports, the Division of Health will be releasing a, a weekly report each Friday and a comprehensive report will be released quarterly. Um, public Health Nursing is offering free COVID-19 vaccines for residents age 18 and older. For more information, please go to the county website. Um, COVID testing, free at home test kits continue to be offered. Uh, it's a program sponsored by the County of Sussex. And again, please visit the website for that. Office of Environmental Health has done 90 food inspections, 41 um, were temporary. And so that shows that a lot of the events that were canceled last year um, throughout the county, there were more events happening and we're starting to see people out and doing things. Hopefully we get at some point we're back at normal. Um, and there's been uh, some review plans, five fixed review plans. So hopefully those are, doesn't say whether uh, it's, those are new facilities, but most of the time those are new ones to replace those that may have closed and 40 temporary. Um, recreational bathing, that's a requirement that we do that throughout the county for all facilities that they are inspected and approved for to operate and there's water testing which gets done every two weeks at those camps, uh, bathing places. So 32 were inspected, four campgrounds and four youth camps. And I just want to say that we experienced another um, storm that came through the county. Uh, we, I was personally out with, uh, for three days, two nights, and for the first time in almost 40 years, we had two trees uh, come down. So uh, it was, pretty devastating storm throughout the county um, and JCPNL was out there working. Um, some of the complaints, and I complain too because when you don't have, you know, electric, but what happened in this storm is that it wasn't necessarily those branches that we see hanging over the trees that we don't understand why they don't cut them. Uh, it actually was the trees that came and fell, large trees, fell on those lines and broke those lines. It's a very powerful storm that came through the county, and we were grateful that uh, the damage, there wasn't more damage. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Yardley, and again, thank you all for joining us this evening. Thanks again to Alan and the MWA for coming here this evening. I'd also like to welcome new counsel with us this evening, Katie. Uh, it's great to have you here, and thank you for joining us. I'll keep my report brief tonight as well, especially since uh, the three other commissioners have stolen a lot of it, but that's okay. <laughs> um, regarding COVID, the only other thing I, I did want to mention is, uh, yes, we are doing our uh, pop-up clinics. Uh, yes, we are seeing progress when it comes to vaccines, but our uh, free at-home COVID-19 testing programs are still available here in Sussex County to all residents. Um, one test uh, is available to 18 and older. Another is available to ages six and older. It ships right to your house. You can request it right from our website. It's a really easy process um, and it's still available uh, here in Sussex County. Um, I also wanted to mention for our residents age 65 and older that the Division of Senior Services is available in securing vaccination appointments. So if you or somebody that you know is in need of that assistance, please feel free to give them a call. They're extremely nice at 973. 579-0555. And as always, all of that information, including the latest updates and links to nearly a dozen other vaccination clinics and sponsors in our area are all available on our COVID-19 webpage, which is simply sussex.nj.us slash COVID-19. Switching gears on tonight's agenda, and we will discuss it more later on once we get there, there is an amendment to Sussex County's 2021 capital budget with two corresponding bond ordinances to be introduced for first reading. This amendment incorporates $1,899,190 from seven previously authorized bond ordinances and reappropriates them to priority facility projects such as roof renovations to the sheriff and prosecutor's office, a pole barn and storage building at the Office of Emergency Management's complex in Frankfurt, renovation and the purchase of remaining units at the Cochrane House building, and potentially a tree truck building as well. I do want to mention that some of the reasoning behind this is due to previously authorized projects for the correctional facility in Sussex County, 
that are no longer necessary due to Sussex County's agreement with Morris County when it comes to the housing of inmates. Also, excess funds from other previous <coughs> facilities projects, such as the roof project at Ginny's House, are also now available to be used for these priority projects under these previously issued bond ordinances. Neither of the two bond ordinances on tonight's agenda require the issuance of any new debt. And again, as I mentioned, we will go over those items in more detail later on in tonight's meeting. It was mentioned during our uh, uh, first public comment portion, Commissioner Fantasia and I had the opportunity to meet with our county administration, council, and other county professionals last week to discuss our strategy when it comes to the American Rescue Plan and the funding Sussex County will be receiving from it. I thought that meeting went very well. I think it's accurate to say right now that uh, we are assessing all of the information that we've been provided to make sure that we have a complete handle of it, what we can and can't do with it. Uh, and we're just starting to evaluate uh, possible priority projects and beginning to put together a possible priority list. Uh, this process, though, will certainly be a marathon. Uh, certainly it's not going to be a sprint. But I also wanted to mention that we are looking forward to seeking community input as well. Uh, I think we're really excited about that. So more to come with that. I'm pleased to see the progression that's taking place there on that important initiative. Tying into what Commissioner Carney mentioned, last weekend I had the opportunity to join members of the Lackawanna Cutoff Historical Committee at the Greendale train station in Green Township, which will soon be a museum. I was there to uh, join them in officially dedicating uh, and recognizing the Sussex County Historical Marker there, which is on Wolf's Corner Road right next to the train station. It was a wonderful event. They've done some pretty impressive work over there, so if you're ever in that area, be sure to check it out. Uh, but for as much as that location is part of our county's history, though, as Commissioner Carney mentioned, it could very well be a part of Sussex County's future as well. Uh, there has been a lot of state and federal discussion about national rail expansion, and you can bet that Sussex County is absolutely supportive and active in those discussions. As Commissioner Carney mentioned, I think many of us understand uh, the potential benefits of uh, commuter rail expansion in Sussex County, and it was really cool and, and really cool to see that amount of interest and enthusiasm there at the Greendale train station last week, and I appreciated them having me. And finally, and just as importantly, the Sussex County Fair is returning, and it is one of my favorite events ever in Sussex County. It's going to be August 7th to 14th at the Sussex County Fairgrounds, and if you haven't attended before, I really encourage you to do so. It's an, it's an awesome experience. It's great for families. It's great to go with your friends, no matter what they love. For example, uh, I'm going to be joining Commissioner Yardley on the Gravitron machine at the fan. I know he's a, at the fair. I know he's a big fan of that. Uh, Commissioner Patillo loves the Ring of Fire, uh, so I'll be joining her upside down on that ride. Uh, and then after that, uh, Commissioner Carney and I are going to wind down uh, for some face painting and pottery demos, so I'm really looking forward to that as well. It's truly a fun event for everybody, no matter what you're into, and I hope we can see you there. For more information on this year's fair, please visit sussexcountyfairgrounds.org. With that, I'm going to conclude my report, and we're going to move on to item 10 on our agenda, which is the approval of the consent agenda. The Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex has reviewed the consent agenda, consisting of various proposed resolutions, and determined that adoption of the said resolutions is in and will further the public interest. If any commissioner would like to remove an item to be considered separately, please do so now. Seeing none, are there any motions for the consent agenda items A through E? So moved. Commissioner Patillo moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Carney seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? The motion carries. Item 11 on our agenda is the approval of our uh, meeting minutes. Um, all are eligible to vote for this, with the exception of Commissioner Patilla, who missed this meeting. Is there a uh, motion for the approval of our regular minutes, minutes for June 23rd, 2021? I'll make the motion. Commissioner Yardley makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Carney seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries. 
Item 12 on our agenda is our appointments and or resignations. You'll notice three reappointments to the Sussex County Mental Health Board. Certainly wanted to thank them for their uh, service and their interest in continuing. Also did want to make note that we do have some openings here on this board. If you or anybody you know are interested, please contact uh, our county clerk. Uh, item 12 on our agenda, do we have any motions to adopt resolutions 12A through C? Still moved. Commissioner Second. Carney moves and Commissioner Yardley seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Cicillo? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Deputy Director Cicillo? Yes. Motion carries. Item 13 on our agenda is an ordinance for first reading. This ordinance reads, establishing a mid-block crosswalk on Sussex County Route 622 at a point approximately 1,550 feet east of County Route 521 at plus or minus mile marker 0.29 in Stillwater Township. This is a motion to adopt this ordinance on first reading and authorize the clerk to advertise this ordinance as introduced for first reading and also post the same on the bulletin board in the lobby of the county administrative center together with a notice of public hearing stating that a hearing will be held on July 28, 2021 at 6 p.m. prior to final adoption of this ordinance. Before I ask for uh, a motion and second in discussion, I am going to ask um, uh, for Administrator Poff, if you wouldn't mind just coming and explaining this for the benefit of the public. Thank you, Commissioner Fasano. Uh, the county received a request from Stillwater Township for the installation of a mid-block cross walk across County Route 622, otherwise known as Swartzwood Road, between the Stillwater Community Center, which was the former Swartzwood Firehouse, and the Stillwater Township Park. The County Department of Engineering and Planning has completed an engineering study evaluating the installation of a mid-block crosswalk at this location and recommends that the crosswalk be authorized. The mid-block crosswalk will be installed in accordance with the county pavement marking details and appropriate traffic signs will be installed. The ordinance introduction that the commissioners are asked to consider this evening provides for authorizing the mid-block crosswalk as established through the aforementioned engineering study and establishes the out-year operation, maintenance, and upgrades of the safety amenities at this crossing by the county. Thank you, Administrator Poff. With that, is there a motion uh, for an introduction for first reading for this ordinance? I'll make the motion. Commissioner Yardley Second. moves. Commissioner Patillo seconds. Any discussion? I just got a quick uh, question, Administrator Poff. Uh, will we have a price on that? We'll have that at our next meeting. Yeah. Thank you. And this is a reminder, this is just for first reading. Right. We will have a Correct. second reading at our next meeting. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Seeing none, Terry, can you please call the roll for uh, the first reading of this ordinance? Commissioner Petillo? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Deputy Director Fasano? Yes. Item 14 on our agenda is our resolutions portion. Are there any motions for item 14A through E? So moved. Commissioner Patillo moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Carney seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Deputy Director Fasano? Yes. Item 15 on our agenda is the awards of contract change orders bid. The Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex has reviewed the award of contract change orders bids consisting of various proposed resolutions and determined that adoption of the said resolutions is in and will further 
the public interest. Is there a motion to adopt uh, item number A, uh, change order number one uh, for this final valuation? I'll make the motion. Commissioner Yardley moves. Is there a second? I'll second. Commissioner Patillo seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Deputy Director Casado? Yes. Item 16 on our agenda, 16A, is resolution, payment of the bills. Is there a motion to adopt the bills list? So moved. Commissioner Patilla moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Carney seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Patilla? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Deputy Director Casado? Yes. Motion carries, and we'll move to uh, item 16B. Uh, and Administrator Poff, I'm going to ask for you to come up again um, to explain uh, really item 16B, the amending of the 2021 capital budget, uh, and then items C and D, which are the introductions for first readings for bond ordinances 2106 and 2107. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. And, and you did a very good job of summarizing it earlier, so I'm not sh quite sure how much more I, I will have to add. Uh, other than to say that these three items that are being put before the board this evening incorporate $1,899,190 under various improvements to county facilities from seven previously authorized bond ordinances <coughs> reappropriating for the following purposes. The purchase of the remaining units at the Cochrane House building, renovations to the Cochrane House, a pole barn and storage building at the Office of Emergency Management Complex in Frankfurt, roof renovations at the Sheriff's Office and the Prosecutor's Office, and if funds allow, uh, additional funding for the tree truck building. The total of $1,899,190 will be reappropriated with these two bond ordinances to be considered for introduction this evening. Bond Ordinance 21-06 will amend Bond Ordinance 18-01 in the amount of $863,597 from authorizations of projects that were completed and have remaining funds as well as authorized projects for the correctional facility that are no longer necessary due to the contracted services for the housing of inmates at the jail. Bond Ordinance 21-07 authorizes and reappropriates $1,035,593 from the following excess bond proceeds of Bond Ordinance 13-02, 14-04, 15-03, Sixteen dash oh two, seventeen dash oh one, and nineteen dash oh five. Uh, as was mentioned previously, as a result of the actions taken by the Board of County Commissioners to facilitate the housing of inmates at the Morris County Correctional Facility, there were a number of projects appropriated that are no longer necessary in the amount of $352,360. The remaining funds from the Cochrane House roof settlement in the amount of $233,958, excess funds from the Jenny's House roof and column repair project in the amount of $192,373, and other completed facilities projects in the amount of $256,000 $902 are also now available to be used for the identified priority projects from the previously authorized bonds. Uh, as it's been stated, neither of these two bond ordinances require the issuance of new debt. Thank you, Administrator Poff. Any board members have any questions for Greg? We are on 16B, which is amending the 2021 capital budget. Is there a motion to do so? So moved. Second. Commissioner Patillo moves. Commissioner Yardley seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Commissioner Carney? 
Yes. Commissioner Yes. Deputy Director Machado. Yes. Item C is introduction for first reading, bond ordinance 2106. This is a motion to adopt this ordinance on first reading and authorize the clerk to advertise this ordinance as introduced for first reading. And also post the same on the bulletin board in the lobby of the county administrative center together with a public notice hearing stating that a hearing will be held on July 28, 2001 at 6 p.m. prior to final adoption of this ordinance. Is there a motion for this ordinance? So moved. Commissioner Patillo moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Yardley seconds. Any discussion? Harry Nunn, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Deputy Director Prasad? Yes. Item D on our agenda is introduction for first reading bond ordinance 2107. This is a motion to adopt this ordinance on first reading and authorize the clerk to advertise this ordinance as introduced for first reading. And also post same on the bulletin board in the lobby of the County Administrative to Center together with a notice of public hearing stating that a hearing will be held on July 28, 2021 at 6 p.m. prior to the final adoption of this ordinance. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance for first reading? So moved. Commissioner Patilla moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Carney seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Deputy Director Prasad? Yes. Item 17 on our agenda is our personnel portion, and we have a resolution authorizing the personnel agenda of July 14, 2021. Is there a motion to do so? Yes. So, I'll make the motion. Can I move it? Com I'll, I'll second. Commissioner Yardley moves. Commissioner Patillo seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, Terry, can you please call the roll? Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Yardley? Yes. Deputy Director Prasad? Yes. Motion carries, and we'll move to item 18, which is our administrative report. Greg, do you? Yes, you do. Come on up. <laughs> I'll be brief. Um, I just wanted to share that uh, we have uh, collected 100% of taxes for the second quarter from uh, the municipal governments. We are starting to see improvements in those revenue items that we were encountering losses last year due to the pandemic, which includes uh, revenue from the sheriff's office, transit, and motor vehicle fines, all of which were the hardest hit by the pandemic. Uh, our other revenues are on target for this time this year, as are our expenditures on target where we believe they should be at this time of year. So in terms of the county's finances, uh, we are right where we believe we should be. As was previously mentioned, due to the decrease in the number of positive COVID-19 cases, the Sussex County Division of Health will now be releasing weekly reports each Friday a detailed report will be released on a quarterly basis. And also too, uh, just to recognize, uh, even though it is a little bit early, the Sussex County uh, Transit System is recognizing its 40th anniversary this year. Uh, there will be a recognition held uh, towards the end of September uh, at the transit facility on Wheatsworth Road and uh, certainly uh, all the commissioners are invited to attend. Uh, lastly, as the commissioners are aware, the county did receive verification from the Division of Local Government Services within the Department of Community Affairs that uh, the CDBG CV grant submission deadline has been moved to October 15th. A draft phase one process schedule has been prepared by the county's consultant and as a point of interest, uh, pre-applications uh, were due yesterday, and those uh, pre-applications are currently being reviewed within the Division of Planning and by the county's consultant. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Administrator Pop. That's good news. Item 19, County Council Report. Do you have anything for us this evening? I would just like to thank the board for their appointment of our firm and Doug Steinhardt. Stepped into place in the office two weeks ago, so at this point we do not have a report, but <laughs> I anticipate that changing in the future. Thank you. Thanks for being here as well. Item 20 on our agenda is unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business on the board? 
seeing none, item 21 is new business. Or is there any new business on the board? Seeing none, we will move to item 22, which is our second and final public session from the floor. This public session is for those wishing to make general comments of three minutes or less on non-agenda topics. Please simply come up to the microphone, maintaining six feet distance from other attendees. State your name and municipality for the record. Uh, the clerk will give you a go ahead and will also give you a one minute warning as well. With that, is there a motion to open the floor for public comment? So moved. Commissioner Patillo moves. Is there a second? I'll second. Commissioner Yardley seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries and we are open to the floor for public comment if anyone would like to come up. Good evening, my name is Zoe Heath. I am from Vernon Township. Um, tonight I am reading a statement on behalf of Amanda Reeker who could not be here this evening and she is from Glenwood. Commissioners, thank you for your time. Last meeting, I, wasn't, I was able to attend in person and requested a Zoom option be added for those of us that are sick or have children and cannot be there in person. I am now back in chemo, which means I cannot be as involved as I'd like to be once again. Watching on video the day after is not the same as being part of it live. Sadly, I don't know when I'll even make it back to another meeting, but I've emailed over the last two weeks, but these things need repeating. Regarding Assembly Bill 4454, how are you against this? This bill has, is not filed with the rhetoric many against it claim. People can use all the hateful words they want, but we know the truth. Commissioner Fantasia mentioned at the last meeting having Tyler Clemente's family at her school in Bergen. Well, how can you talk about him while simultaneously opposing inclusivity teaching? You cannot be an ally if you are opposed to this bill, end of story. Like most parents these days, not stuck in the 1950s, I want a better world for my daughter, and I want a better county for her to go to school in, one that is inclusive, one that treats LGBTQ plus education the same way as heterosexual education, and doesn't make people, children, feel lesser than, which, this, which opposing this bill does. Yes, it's a law already, but many of us see the push in this county by elected officials, want to be elected officials, and general bigots to stop it in schools. These kids are human beings that deserve love and, excuse me, that deserve love and deserve to be included and have their stories told and needs met. Having these, these teachings may help one child not take their life someday. I don't care that, that I don't say that flippantly, LGBTQ plus children are at a higher risk of suicide. Imagine having a child and worrying all the time if they will be bullied or killed for being who they are. Imagine having a child fearing going to school or expressing yourself. We need to start teaching young ch children to accept all and at an early age, to not hate, to not kill someone because they are gay. If you truly want to be an ally, start accepting things like this bill. Start calling out people that use slurs and mock anyone they deem different. Be an actual ally, not just one for show. Thank you. That was from Amanda Riker and Vernon. Thank you, Zoe. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Ruby Sanders, Newton County Committee Woman, District 1. I'd like to ask you what the end game is for continuing with COVID updates and what the end game is by leaving it up to individual schools and businesses, whether to require masks or vaccines or social distancing measures. I see that the updates are now being presented once a week, which is a step in the right direction. However, these reports since the beginning have only created chaos, division, and segregation. Everyone is arguing whether these measures really work, but that's not the issue. The question is, how did politicians suddenly become our doctors? How did doctors suddenly become afraid to see us? How do these doctors have any legal right to send us home when we have symptoms of any illness and tell us to come back if things worsen? How do businesses, schools, hospitals, doctor's offices, airlines, offices of elected officials, police departments, etc., suddenly have any legal right to discriminate against those who exercise their constitutional rights and who choose bodily autonomy for themselves and their children by not wearing a mask or taking a vaccine? It has never been this way before, so why should things be any different now? There have always been religious and medical exemptions for vaccines, and in some places, even a philosophical exemption. This has always been private information, and these unvaccinated children or adults have never been denied services or 
turned away based on this information because if they were, it would be considered discrimination and therefore the company could be sued. It all comes Excuse down me, to the Constitution and what the- slow down? It, it, there's a little- uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it just all slow comes. Okay, I'll slow down. It all comes down to the Constitution and what the Constitution stands for. One of the things that the Constitution protects is medical freedom. And now this big push to get everyone vaccinated is medical tyranny at its finest. Medical procedures are a personal choice, but nobody is respecting this stance. It is being pushed down our throats and we are being shamed for nonconformity and we're being looked at as being selfish. And you know what? Enough is enough. Need I remind you that vaccine companies cannot be held liable for any injuries or deaths resulting from any or all vaccines? No matter where you stand on this issue, doesn't matter. This should be a huge red flag. Um, <laughs> we are being told that these things are a choice and that we're not being forced, but is that really true? I challenge you to think upon that. For instance, if all the food stores required a vaccine to get in, that would be forced because now you're sentencing people to death unless they take a vaccine. And just this week, knucklehead <laughs> Governor Phil Murphy advocated for vaccine passports and stated they will be forthcoming. I ask this board to look at the hard issues and take a stance against this liberal dramatization of the sickness. The left is pushing the vaccines and this agenda to make everyone reliant on the government. We saw this in Nazi Germany and the Marx and Communist manifestos. This is unacceptable here in Sussex County. And let me ask you something. How can you expect to go back to normal by doing abnormal things? Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Can I make it a little shorter? I don't know if I can. Uh, Christy Laven Hardison. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, before Wait a minute, Christy, I can't hear a thing you're saying. Huh? Sorry. And I don't know, it's a little bit hard for me to breathe, honestly. Is, the it, mask on. is it against protocol? Or no, take it off so we can hear you. Can't hear a thing with the mask on. I could pull it over. Like that? Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, before I say what I was planning to say, um, I just want to say I do appreciate actually your updates. Um, it's actually really helped me at least to, um, I feel that it's really kept us all informed um, and I really have appreciated um, everything that you have done um, with the vaccinations and I, I thought, I think that you've really done a good job for us, so thank you. Um, what I was planning to say today was um, that I learned today that um, within the United States, 93,000 um, Americans actually passed away in 2020 from overdose deaths. And um, that really struck me. Um, within our county, I wasn't able to get the stats for us um, for, for the last year. But um, in terms of the scope for 2020, to give you some context, um, that, that's an increase of 29% from 2019. Um, and I know for myself, when um, I feel kind of powerless over you know, something as tragic as that, um, I really think about, I think about what can we do? And um, I just wanted you as commissioners and as leaders to know that um, there is something happening on um, August 7th, the Center for Prevention and Counseling has uh, changing the face of addiction, um, their walk, their annual walk. Mm -hmm. And um, it's such a great community event. It brings people together. Um, and what you can do as leaders is you can either donate, you can show up. Um, I know that there's business leaders or business owners rather that um, are, you know, they're they're walking, they, they have teams. Um, there's also family members that are leading teams um, because they have family members that are either in recovery or family members that have passed away. Um, so I just think it's really important that you can either, you can either promote the event, you could donate, or you could join a team yourself. So I just thought it was something important for you to be aware of um, and for the community to be aware of as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Ms. Lavin, can you just send us that information? Send it to uh, Terry. Yeah. Thank you. Center for Prevention and Prevention. Are there any other speakers? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'm going to ask for a motion to close the floor for public comment and to return to regular business. Still move. Second. Commissioner Carney moves. Commissioner Patillo seconds. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Motion carries. Item 23 on our agenda is our reminders portion. And we'd like to remind you to please check the county's website, which is simply www.sussex.nj.us for meeting schedules, and to please check our uh, county COVID-19 webpage as well, which is www.sussex.nj.us slash COVID-19. Item 24 is executive session in which there is none scheduled for this evening. So with that, unless any board member feels differently, I would like to ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting tonight. Commissioner Patillo moves. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Carney seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstaining? <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you very much and have a wonderful night.